Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be a song, no one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle wide. Good morning. Welcome to worship at Leap of Faith Church. Thank you for being here with me this Sunday morning. I'm Virgie Holbrook. I'm the pastor of the church. Thank you for coming to worship. Today we're going to hear, hear what Jesus has to say to those whose hearts are hurting, to those whose hearts are positively broken. But first, here's some information you'll want to know. Next Sunday, November 12th, in the sanctuary in the fellowship area, we'll be hosting the Leap of Faith Church Thanksgiving dinner. That'll be at noon following the worship service. If you're in the Texoma area, I so much hope that you'll be here. Um, be here in person to enjoy Thanksgiving dinner together. Um, no worries, the Dallas Cowboys don't play until mid-afternoon, about 3.30, so you won't miss the game if you stay for lunch. Today, if you're worshiping on YouTube, please subscribe to the Leap of Faith Church page. If you haven't already done that, please leave a comment if you're enjoying the worship service. If you're enjoying the worship service, click the share button, share the worship service with someone you think would also enjoy it. If you're worshiping, if you are worshiping on Facebook, please leave a comment. Uh, love to know who is who's here with us. We'd be grateful, of course, for your financial support of Leap of Faith Church. Several ways to do that on YouTube. You can text to give 903-225-8774. If you receive our Thursday night newsletter, the PayPal button is there. You can click that. You can also click that PayPal button on mylofc.org, our website. Or you can just give by check to Leap of Faith Church. Mail it or bring it by 5615 North Farm to Market, 1417 Sherman, Texas, 75092. If you're on the Leap of Faith Church Facebook page, the donate, the donate button is there. Easy just to click that button. Well, today at Leap of Faith Church, we are observing All Saints Sunday. We're remembering the faithful who have passed from this life into life eternal. And so we begin with a prayer. Our God, on this All Saints Sunday, we remember as if we could ever forget all the love in our lives. We remember those we love who are alive and active. We remember those we love who are living now with you. We remember those who shaped us, led us, loved us into a relationship with you through Jesus Christ. Today, God, we remember those who have brought light into our lives, and we give thanks. We're praying in Jesus' name. Amen. Again in Matthew, the Gospel according to Matthew, this time it's chapter 5, verses 1 through 12, and this is how that goes. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. After he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for those is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they'll inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they'll receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they'll be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. I ask God to bless this reading of God's word. Well, I imagine that there's hardly anyone who hasn't heard already the news that Matthew Perry, better known as, as Chandler, being of, of the long-running TV show Friends, I imagine most everybody has heard by now the news that actor Matthew Perry died a week ago on October 28th. 
This past Tuesday, the Dallas Morning News gave three quarters, three fourths of a full page in the front section of the paper, the news section, to stories about Matthew Perry's passing, which if you think about it, is a lot more coverage than many, many people who are international or national persons of note has have received. In these stories that I read this week, Perry is remembered, of course, as a talented actor with perfect comedic timing and also a person who worked hard, worked hard to overcome his alcoholism and drug addiction. The story reported that he had spent, spent more than half of his life in treatment facilities. Imagine that. The cause of his death seems still at this point to be more speculation than fact. He was 54 years old. He was uh, 54 years old when he died. He never married, evidently was never a father, never had children, but Matthew Perry, he was certainly widely known. News reports of his death consistently stress that he was much loved by those who knew him best. The same day that I read the news coverage about Matthew Perry's death, I read in the same paper, the Dallas News, the obituary of the pastor I mentioned in Joys and Concerns last Sunday, the Reverend Dr. Brian Dunnigan, who served Highland Park Presbyterian Church in Dallas. He was a senior pastor. Dunnigan, 44 years old, died, died 10 days ago at home of what are reported to be unspecified natural causes. He was a husband, married for 15 years to his college sweetheart, the father of three children, an accomplished leader, scholar, pastor, athlete. In the Dallas area and Presbyterian circles, Dunnigan was evidently well known. News reports of his death consistently stress that he was much loved by those who knew him best. Now my intention here is not to compare these two men, though each was evidently much accomplished in his own field. Comparing people, of course, is bound to be a futile enterprise. My intention is to point out that different as these two men were, what mattered in the end is that each one is remembered with love by those who knew them best. Each one is remembered with love, and I imagine that each one is deeply, deeply mourned as well. Just as each one of those whose names I'll, I'll read in just a few moments uh, as having passed from this life into life eternal, those dear to, to folks here at Leap of Faith, just like each one whose name I'll read later is also loved and mourned, which is why I was drawn to this particular traditional All Saints Sunday reading today. Here's some background to that reading. The last few weeks we've been talking, talking about stories from near the end of the gospel according to Matthew, events that happened during the last week of Jesus' life before he went to death on that cross. Today, though, we've moved to a reading that's closer to the very beginning of Matthew. As I mentioned, it is a traditional All Saints Sunday reading. What's happened up to this point in the gospel is that Jesus has been born. His family has settled down in Nazareth. What's happened so far is that Jesus has been baptized. He's received the Holy Spirit. He's been tempted by the devil, and he's moved to Capernaum, where he started his ministry. What's happened so far is that Jesus has called the first four of his 12 disciples, but has attracted presumably many more unnamed followers, unnamed disciples, along with curious crowds of suffering humanity who are hoping against hope that this man Jesus can relieve them, can save them, save them from their pains, can comfort them. And that's where we find ourselves today, biblically speaking. So Jesus is dealing with these hopeless, hurting crowds on the one hand, and Jesus has these so far largely clueless disciples on the other, and he can see he needs to fill the disciples in on what's going on. So he calls the disciples, those committed to following him already, calls his disciples, calls them aside to teach them what they can expect as his followers. First rattle out of the box is the teaching that I read just moments ago. What Jesus tells his disciples, those who are already committed to following him, what Jesus tells his disciples is what they can expect from God as his followers, the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes are not a laundry list of what we have to do to get into heaven. 
They are an affirmation of what we can expect from God if we follow Jesus. It's easier for me to understand if I picture it like this. There's Jesus, and he's sitting down on this mountainside surrounded by people who are determined to follow him, but they don't know yet quite what that means. They don't know quite what that's going to look like. There's Jesus, and he's sitting there on that mountainside speaking to a newborn, a newborn community of faith. There's Jesus sitting down on this mountainside speaking to this community of faith and to each one who's part of that community of faith. And what Jesus says is this. Some of you know already how much you need God. Some of you are absolutely dismayed about what's going on in your lives and in the world. Some of you can't figure out how you can possibly, possibly have the wherewithal to do anything about the wrong, the unfair, unfairness, the sadness, the evil, the heartbreak you're living with. Some of you are so much looking forward to God's kingdom coming on earth that you just can't sit still. Some of you, some of you want to give your whole lives to sell us to serving God, to making a positive difference in God's world, but you know your own weakness far too well. Jesus says to his disciples, others, others will surely look down on you, discourage you if you embrace me as the way to establish the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus says to his disciples, but if you will follow me, you will certainly enter that kingdom. You will certainly, surely, assuredly enter the kingdom of heaven if you follow me. And those words, of course, they're of, of course addressed not only to those very first of Jesus' disciples, but to you and to me as well, his disciples here and now, right here and now today. Because just like Jesus knew those first disciples, he knows us. He knows how bereft and hopeless we feel over, over indescribable horrors in Ukraine and Israel and those in the countries whom they oppose, those who oppose them. Jesus knows how we mourn, mourn over those people. Jesus knows us. And he knows how, how the depth of our mourning over foster children who who can't find families and teenagers who try to find life in deadly drugs and families broken apart by untreated mental health issues. He knows how we mourn over those things. Jesus knows us and he knows, and he knows too how we mourn over our personal losses of those most dear to us. Jesus knows us. He knows our mourning, and he tells us today that if we will follow him, we will certainly, assuredly, positively enter into the comfort of God's kingdom, a time and a place and a situation that brings solace and peace and joy, not only in life to come, but in this life too, this life right here, the one we have today. He tells us that we will be healed as surely as the crowds of diseased and demon-possessed and paralyzed that he healed so long ago in his very first acts of ministry. I know for sure that for some of us who have lost someone they loved to death in the past year, I know for sure that it feels sometimes, maybe all the time, like you will never, ever be healed from that loss, that the pain, it will be a constant agony until the day that you yourself die. But I also know this. I also know for sure that when, even in our most difficult, painful, profound, profound losses, we decide to follow Jesus in moving, in moving forward and risking living lives of love in spite of our mourning, we find comfort that is deep, and indescribable. That's a promise. That is the promise, the unbreakable, unshakable promise of our Lord, our Savior, our Jesus, to each one who follows him, to you and to me. Amen. So joys and concerns today, what's going on in your life? Do you have joys or concerns to share? 903-821-4505. Uh, Get in touch with me and let me know if you have anything that needs adding to our prayer list. Here's what I have on that list. Please pray, of course, for those who lead our world, our country, the states, the communities we live in. Lots of health-related health concerns. Judy, Cheryl, Pam, Pat. 
Robin, Ray, Debbie, James, another Pat, Dwayne, Billy, John, Ned, Fidel, Miriam, Carol, Steve, and Dassey. We've had a, a very particular concern arise this week here at Leap of Faith. We've become aware of two families, each of, each of which needs a car donated. Um, if, you, if you've been thinking that you'd uh, like to replace a car, if you have access for some reason or other to a car that you would be able to donate to the church, please know that it would go to a very, very good home. Um, we're praying for two cars, and I know that's a lot, but maybe maybe you have one or know someone who does. Uh, please, please pray about that. I ask your prayers for those who serve in the military of our country, Tyler, Jessica, Devin, Clayton, and Colin especially. We have four birthdays this week to celebrate, November 5th. It's Dan Engelman, November 9th. It's Blake Majors, November 10th. It's St. Allen. And November 11th, it's Brad Nixon. If you know any of these people, please call and wish them a happy birthday. We have other joys as well. Uh, Tiffany is expecting a new baby soon. Brita's niece is expecting her twins in December. Autumn Hobbs is our teacher assistant. Autumn Hobbs, a teacher assistant at the Parent Early Childhood Center. She is our staff member of the week. Please pray for Autumn. We are thanking God as well for the Leap of Faith Band and for Brad Nixon and Summer Holbrook who produced this worship service. Our prayer today is one inspired uh, by a prayer written by Reverend Mindy Mitchell posted on revolution.org. And this is how that prayer goes. Our God, today we remember our ancestors in the faith, those whose, those whose stories we study in the Old and New Testaments. We remember the ministers and pastors and priests who've taught us to follow Jesus. We remember friends and neighbors whose examples of faithfulness have encouraged us to be faithful too. We remember our grandparents and parents, aunts and uncles, those who've gone before us in our lifetime, showing us the way. We lift up the memories of children and grandchildren, brothers and sisters, husbands and wives, whose lives here with us ended too soon, but in the light of your love will continue eternally. We lift up to you, God, the names of those dear to Leap of Faith members and friends, those who in just this last year have passed from this life to life eternal. We are secure in the faith that they are with you now forever. Let me share with you as well as with, as well as with God the names of those folks who we are, um, whose lives we are remembering and celebrating today. Terry Brown's friend, Kathy Ackman, Tori Jones' grandmother, Doris Kennan, Shane Greer's mother, Gloria Maglio, Tony Oliver's mother, Jesse Oliver, Mary Ann Luscombe's great nephew, Tim DeWitt, and, and her cousin, Jim Rosberg, Rita Williams' mother in law, Betty Jean Williams, Jean Sterling, Steve Ramsey's mother, Jeannie Ramsey, Billy Helvey's aunt, Artie Crisp, Fred Spears and Ray McCarthy's friend, Stacy Starnes. Dave Monson's mother, Rachel Monson. Ray McCarthy's stepfather, Robert Derryberry. Natalie Griffin's brother, Carol Cloud's grandson, Robert Griffin. Kara Thomas's friend, Trent Smith. Jewel Woodson's friend, Clay Higby. Kara Colvin. And David Cumming. We celebrate the lives of those we've named God and lift up many more names in our hearts. We believe in faith that they are with you now. Thank you, God, for all who've gone on to join you beyond this life. We trust your promise of new life in Christ and know that you're with us, God, in grief and in celebration. You never leave us alone. In the name of Jesus, in whom live loves forever, we pray now as he's taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to the close of our worship service today, I remind you of what it is that Leap of Faith Church believes. We embrace as our own statement of faith, the historic confession of the Christian faith that's called the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Apostles' Creed, it speaks to what we believe. I remind you as well of the Leap of Faith Church values statement. Leap of Faith Church recognizes a single class of membership which allows for all persons to be treated equally, regardless of race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, or gender identity with respect to sacramental worship, service, leadership, marriage, and ordination. Thank you again for being here this morning. If I can be helpful to you in some way, if Leap of Faith Church can be helpful to you in some way, um, please let me know. 903-821-4505. The same goes for receiving our weekly newsletter. comes out on Thursday evening by way of email. If you'd like to have it, send me your email address, 903-821-4505. To find out more about the church, go to Facebook, to the Leap of Faith Church Facebook page, or to mylofc.org. Now, that's our website, and it's up. We are, uh, we are kind of rebuilding it, reconstructing it. But there is information there that you might find helpful. If you'd like to support Leap of Faith Church by your giving, uh, please know how much we appreciate your contribution to, to letting ministry go forward here at Leap of Faith. You can text to give, 903-225-8774. Click the PayPal button on our newsletter on our website. Use the Donate button on Facebook or write a check to Leap of Faith Church and send it or bring it to 5615 North Farm to Market, 1417 Sherman, Texas, 75092. Thank you for worshiping at Leap of Faith Church this morning. If you're ready to come back into the sanctuary, next Sunday would be a wonderful time to do that as we celebrate Thanksgiving uh, in worship and after worship with the dinner here in the, in the fellowship area. Come and bring a friend. We would love to see you. I hope you'll give some thought in the days ahead of what we've talked about this morning, about turning to Jesus, the source of all comfort, when our hearts feel positively broken. Now I, hope you'll, now, I hope you'll stick around for music from the Leap of Faith Church Band. I hope you'll be back next Sunday. I hope you'll get in touch if I can be helpful to you. And now go in peace, my friend. Go in peace. For all the saints. For all the saints who from their labors rest.
feet have trod with its crystal tight forever flowing by the throne of God yes we'll gather at the river the beautiful beautiful river gather with the saints at the shining river lay we every burden down grace our spirits will deliver to provide a robe and crown yes we'll gather at the river a beautiful beautiful river gather with the saints at the river Flows by the throne of God. Soon we'll reach the shining river. Soon our pilgrimage shall cease. Soon our happy hearts will quiver with the melody of peace. Yes, we'll gather at the river. The beautiful. Beautiful river, gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Yes, we'll gather at the river where bright angels' feet have trod, with its crystal tide forever flowing by the throne of God. This time. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. <laughs> to have 